Office of the Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court or ICC has applied to the Pre-Trial Chamber or PTC to investigate the alleged crimes against humanity committed in President Rodrigo Duterte's violent campaign against drugs. It also seeks to probe into the killings in Davao City from 2011 to 2016. Prosecutor Fatou Bensouda's application for authorization must be approved by the ICC's pre-trial chamber. Bensouda told the PTC that the same types of actors also allegedly committed strikingly similar crimes in the city of Davao starting in 1988 and continuing through 2016. On the drug war, Bensouda said the extrajudicial killings appear to have been committed pursuant to an official state policy of the Philippine government. Bensuda adds, police and other government officials planned, ordered, and sometimes directly perpetrated extrajudicial killings. They paid police officers and vigilantes bounties for extrajudicial killings. She says state officials at the highest level of government spoke publicly and repeatedly in support of extrajudicial killings and created a culture of impunity for those who committed them. There is no certainty about the time it may take the PTC judges to reject or approve the request. Bensuda retires on June 15 and will be succeeded by Britain's Karim Khan. Human rights groups say about 27,000 have been killed in Duterte's drug war. The police pegged its numbers at only around 7,000. The application to open the investigation means Bensuda was able to establish jurisdiction by finding that the Philippine justice system is unable or unwilling to prosecute these killings. Jurisdiction was established despite the Department of Justice's drug war review. For arrests to be made, the ICC will rely on the cooperation of Philippine authorities or other member states where the subject of the warrant would travel to. Duterte has withdrawn the Philippines from the Rome Statute and by extension the ICC and said it will deny any ICC personnel entry into the Philippines. The ICC has said before that Duterte's unilateral withdrawal will not affect its investigation. Meantime, presidential spokesman Harry Roque is confident that the International Criminal Court's pre-trial chamber will reject the request. Sasayangin lang nilang panahon, sasayangin lang nilang resources ng hukuman dahil without cooperation from the Philippine state, hinding hindi naman makakabuo ng kaso kung hindi base sa ebidensya na hearsay at galing mismo sa mga komunista at politikong kalaban ng presidente. In related news, former United Nations Special Rapporteur Agnes Kalama says the request for authorization to investigate is a crucial step in attaining justice for victims in President Rodrigo Duterte's war on drugs. Kalama, now the Secretary General of Amnesty International, emphasizes this move is important given the absolute impunity in the Philippines. Kalyama says this is the much-awaited step in putting an end to the murderous incitement by President Duterte. The Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, revokes the license of brokerage firm R&L Investments Incorporated and its key officers for fraud, leading to a 700 million peso loss in client shares. The brokerage is also slapped with a penalty of 25 million pesos. The SEC found R&L President Joseph Lee and other officers liable for the fraudulent transfer of client shares to an account in another brokerage, Venture Securities Incorporated or VSI. The panel also found Marlo Moron and Julieto Solapas liable for engaging in fraudulent transactions. Moron, a trading floor assistant and settlement clerk of R&L, transferred 1.13 billion pesos worth of client shares in R&L to Solapas' VSI account from 2012 to 2019. However, Solapas' ledger in R&L showed that no such shares existed and they were, in fact, shares from other R&L clients. The SEC found that Lee gave Moron their necessary credentials to execute the trades. The SEC says Lee failed to perform his duty as RNL president, having admitted no knowledge of the daily operations of the brokerage. 
In a separate decision, the SEC also revoked the license of DSI, slapped it with a 32 million peso fine, and disqualified key officers for contributing to the losses of R&L clients. R&L, which has operated for 50 years, is one of the Philippines' oldest stock brokerage firms. Metro Manila and the province of Bulacan are placed under General Community Quarantine or GCQ with some restrictions until the end of June, while the rest of the so-called NCR Plus will be under GCQ with heightened restrictions. The current quarantine mode in place in NCR Plus since June 1 is GCQ with restrictions, which prohibits indoor gyms from operating. Trade Secretary Ramon Lopez says the direction of the national government is to slowly reopen the economy and avoid as much as possible the total lockdown in early 2020 that brought the economy to its knees. Meanwhile, 21 areas in the country are placed under Modified Enhanced Community Quarantine or MECQ from June 16 to 30. These include President Rodrigo Duterte's own hometown Davao City, Cagayan de Oro City, and Zamboanga City. The MECQ classification reflects a trend of rising COVID-19 cases in Mindanao. From the Visayas, Negros Oriental, Iloilo, and Iloilo City are in the MECQ list. The rest are in Luzon. Presidential spokesman Harry Roque says the number of areas in the MECQ list is a record of sorts and it is the highest number of places placed under this level of restrictions. Octa Research Group says Dumaguete City in Negros Oriental is an area of most serious concern outside NCR+. Based on the Department of Health figures from June 7 to 13, Dumaguete had a 129% one-week growth rate in new COVID-19 cases and an average daily attack rate of 69.85 per 100,000 people, which puts the city at extreme high risk. Vaccine manufacturer Novavax says its COVID-19 vaccine is more than 90% effective, which includes variants of the coronavirus. In an announcement Monday, June 14, Novavax released the result of its U.S.-based clinical trial. The study of nearly 30,000 volunteers puts Novavax on track to file for emergency authorization in the United States and elsewhere in the third quarter of 2021. Novavax says its vaccine is 91% effective among volunteers at high risk of severe infection and 100% effective in preventing moderate and severe cases of COVID-19. Meanwhile, the vaccine is roughly 70% effective against virus variants Novavax did not identify. Side effects include headache, fatigue, and muscle pain and were generally mild. Meanwhile, Finance Secretary Sonny Dominguez says the Philippines may need around 25 billion pesos to cover the COVID-19 vaccination of children aged 12 to 15. Dominguez says the estimated amount is based on the use of the Pfizer vaccine as it is the only one so far being administered to children 12 to 15. He says this figure may change if health authorities allow the use of another vaccine for the age group. Aside from vaccinating children, Dominguez says another 60 billion pesos would roughly be needed for the purchase of one-dose booster shots for 85 million Filipinos. In other news, the Japanese government will donate AstraZeneca vaccine to the Philippines as part of its response to the coronavirus pandemic at the soonest possible time. Foreign Minister Motegi Toshimitsu says the donation is part of Japan's assistance to the Association of Southeast Asian Nations and is outside of doses coming from the COVAX facility. It's official. Hollywood stars Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck are back together. Paparazzi photos printed in the New York Post shows the two actors kissing while enjoying a meal with Lopez's family at a restaurant west of Los Angeles on Sunday, June 13. Representatives for the two declined to comment. Lopez and Affleck, dubbed Benifer, became one of the most talked about couples in the celebrity world in the early 2000s. They abruptly called off their wedding in 2003 and split up a few months later. The pair have been pictured together several times in Los Angeles and Miami in recent weeks after Lopez and her former fiancé Alex Rodriguez called off their engagement mid-April after four years together. 
Celebrity outlet E! News also quotes an identified source as saying Lopez was planning to move from Miami to Los Angeles to spend more time with Affleck and was looking for schools for her children in the area. Lopez married Latin singer Mark Anthony five months after her split with Affleck. Affleck went on to marry and later was divorced from actress Jennifer Garner.